Hello, this is Doug Puckett, pastor and rector of St. Paul's Episcopal Church, Graniteville, South Carolina. And in this time of the pandemic crisis, we're still being out of our church. This is the St. Paul's Episcopal Church broadcast on St. Paul's Facebook and on YouTube. Again, on behalf of St. Paul's, we thank the Langley Church of God and its pastor, Eddie Harding, for making this broadcast possible and for the use of their equipment. Our thanks also to all of you who have been watching these broadcasts, both our regular members, but also others as well. Again, our thanks for your faithful giving, St. Paul's members, through the mail. So continue sending in your tithes through the mail to St. Paul's Episcopal Church, P.O. Box 276, Graniteville, South Carolina. <clears throat> in our Episcopal denomination across the United States, and indeed in other denominations as well, Lutheran, Presbyterian, and several others, we are still not having services except small services with 10 or less people, and this is called phase one. For example, every Wednesday at 4 p.m., we meet and have a service of evening prayer and Bible study at St. Paul's Church for eight people. Phase two of this process of re-entry into Sunday worship will probably begin around mid-August and when the public schools open again. So until then, we are having no Sunday services yet. We are still online except on every Sunday morning, I, your priest, go to St. Paul's by myself and do the daily office morning prayer on your behalf. But back to our service, it is Father's Day, and so let us begin our service today with the hymn, Faith of Our Fathers. of you who are at home and watching this service using the prayer book, please now turn in the Book of Common Prayer, the prayer book, to page 50, or rather page 43, for the order of morning prayer. Page 41 in the Book of Common Prayer. Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said unto me, We will go into the house of the Lord. Thus saith the high and lofty one who inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. And for Father's Day, their sound has gone out into all lands and their words into the ends of the world. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us 
at this point, stand or sit in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts, confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Together, Almighty and and most most merciful merciful Father, Father, we we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. sheep. We We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. hearts. We We have offended against thy holy laws. laws. We We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution, remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open thy lips, and and our mouth shall show forth forth thy praise. praise. Glory to the Father, and to the the Son, and to the the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning, is now, and and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come, let us adore him. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 20, beginning with verse 1. Now Pasher, the son of Emer, the priest, who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Then Pasher smote Jeremiah, the prophet, and put him in the stocks, They were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. And it came to pass on the morrow that Pasher brought forth Jeremiah of the stocks. Then said Jeremiah to him, The Lord hath not called thy name Pasher, that's Hebrew meaning free, but Magomisabib, Hebrew meaning a terror from all around. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will make thee a terror to thyself and to all thy friends. And they shall fall by the sword of their enemies, and thine eyes shall behold it. And I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall carry them captive into Babylon, and shall slay them with the sword. Moreover, I will deliver all the strength of this city, and all the labors thereof, and all the precious things thereof, and all the treasures of the kings of Judah will I give into the hand of their enemies. We shall spoil them, and take them, and carry them to Babylon." And thou, Pasher, and all that dwell in thine house shall go into captivity, and thou shalt come to Babylon, and there shalt thou die, and shalt be buried there, thou and all thy friends, to whom thou hast prophesied lies. A prayer of Jeremiah. O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily, everyone mocketh me. For since I spake, I cried out, I cried violence and spoil, because of the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. For I heard the defaming of many, fear on every side. Report, say they, and we will report it. All my familiars watch for my halting, saying, peradventure, he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble, and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed, for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. But, O Lord of hosts, that tries the righteous and seeth the reins in the hearts, let me see thy vengeance on them, for unto thee have I opened my cause. Sing unto the Lord, praise you the Lord, for he hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of evildoers. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 66, verses 8 through 20 on page 680 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 680, verses 8 through 20, the whole page of 680. We will do this responsively. Surely for your sake have I suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. 
I have become a stranger to my own kindred and alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you at the time you have said, O Lord. In your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me. Neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind and your great compassion. Turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me, because of my enemies deliver me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 10, beginning with verse 24. Jesus said, The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, and what you hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear, fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing or a penny or a couple of dollars by our standards, in other words? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father seeing it. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. For ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against his mother, her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Let us now turn in the prayer book to page 53. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. Grant us thy salvation, and do thy ministers with righteousness, 
and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. The colic or prayer assigned for this, the third Sunday of the season of Pentecost. O Lord, we beseech thee, make us to have a perpetual fear and love of thy holy name. For thou never failest to help and govern those whom thou hast set upon the sure foundation of thy loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> for Father's Day. O God, who has brought us near to an innumerable company of angels and to the spirits of just men made perfect, grant us during our earthly pilgrimage to abide in their fellowship and in our heavenly country to become partakers of their joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A colic or prayer in times of plague and sickness. O Almighty God, who in thy wrath didst send a plague upon thine own people in the wilderness for their obstinate rebellion against Moses and Aaron, and also in the time of King David didst slay with the plague of pestilence 70,000, and yet remembering thy mercy didst save the rest. Have pity upon us, miserable sinners, who now are visited with great sickness and mortality. The like as thou didst then accept of an atonement and didst command the destroying angel to cease from punishing, so it may now please thee to withdraw from us this plague and grievous sickness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For restoring public peace at home, O eternal God, our Heavenly Father, who alone makest men to be of one mind in a house and still us the outrage of a violent and unruly people, we beseech thee to appease the tumults tumults which have been lately raised up amongst us, most humbly beseeching thee to grant to all of us grace that we may henceforth obediently walk in thy holy commandments and leading a quiet and peaceable life with each other in all godliness and honesty and may continually offer unto thee our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving for these thy mercies towards us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A colic for grace, O God, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with our mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that we, being ordered by thy governance, may do always what is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For those who know not the Lord, those who have lost their faith, those who need his salvation, O God, who has made in one blood all the peoples of the earth, and did send thy blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near, grant that people everywhere may seek after thee and find thee. Bring the nations into thy fold, pour out thy Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of thy kingdom through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. On page 58 in the prayer book, let us render our thanks together in the words of the general thanksgiving. Together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee 
in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, were without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee and has promised of thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be found acceptable in thy sight, O Lord Jesus, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Today's sermon is entitled, Faith of Our Fathers, Remaining firm in, firm in Jesus Christ. It is Father's Day, a day in which we honor our fathers. And so Anglican or Episcopal priest Frederick William Faber wrote a hymn once, Faith of Our Fathers, which we sang as our opening hymn today. It goes in part, Faith of Our Fathers, in spite of dungeon, fire, and sword. Faith of Our Fathers, Holy Faith. Faith of our fathers, faith and prayer, shall win all nations unto thee. Through the truth that comes from God, mankind shall then indeed be free. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. In other words, friends, we as Christians and those of us who are fathers ought to, ought to give Christ our lives and remain firm in Jesus Christ. We are called to be disciples of Jesus Christ holding to the faith and sharing in the truth God has revealed that many may come to the Savior. We have not given our lives up. In other words, we have not resisted unto blood, as Hebrews 12 declares. And so also, as the colic or prayer today for Father's Day declares, we are a part of an innumerable company of the spirits of just men made perfect in heaven. So may we men abide in their fellowship. In other words, may we be godly men devoted to God, and good works, and be an example to our children and others around us. Today's other colic or prayer assigned for the day, and by the way, what is a colic? It's a prayer that collects all the, the general thoughts together into one prayer, and that's why they're called colics. Today's other colic declares, also, make us, Lord, to have a perpetual fear and love of thy holy name, for thou never failest to help and govern those whom thou hast set upon the sure foundation that is the sure foundation of Jesus Christ. And so today's sermon again is on faith of our fathers, remaining firm in Jesus Christ. Over the last few years, events in Asia, the Middle East, and Africa have been personally shocking to me. For example, in Kenya, once there was a raid on a village by a gunman from nearby Somalia. The gunman rounded up the people and asked them one by one if they were Christians. Those who were Christians were shot. The others were allowed to go free. This is not an isolated incident, however, but has been occurring across the Middle East and Africa. Christians have been persecuted for their faith in Iran and Iraq, Syria and Pakistan. Every so often, churches in Egypt have been firebombed, and once a church bus was stopped and the people in it were all killed by extremists. But it is the courage of our Christian brothers and sisters in those parts of the world that have been a source, has been a source of inspiration for me. They put us to shame somewhat and what they have been willing to do for Jesus Christ as compared to us in the affluent West, in the U.S., Europe, and Canada. Sometimes we put ourselves to shame for what we have not been willing to do for Jesus Christ. Today's scriptures, aside for this Sunday by the prayer book, though, point out we should remain firm in Jesus Christ and have our lives set on his firm foundation. 
So in one option for scripture reading today that the prayer book gives us, but it was not used, St. Paul in Romans 6, 6 puts it this way, knowing this, that our old man, our old nature is crucified with Christ, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. In other words, in the words of the living paraphrase version of the Bible, your old sinful desires were nailed to the cross with Jesus. That part of you that loves to sin is now crushed and fatally wounded so that your sin-loving body is no longer under sin's control. <clears throat> so here St. Paul is calling upon us to remain firm in the faith by fighting the sin that is naturally a part of us in our sinful nature. By the risen Christ dwelling in us, though, we are empowered to fight that sin that does so easily beset us. Likewise, in today's gospel reading from St. Matthew 10, Jesus set out the teaching that there is a duty and there is a cost for being a Christian. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 24, the disciple is not above his master, nor the servant of the Lord above his Lord. Like master, like disciple, in other words. If they have persecuted me, Jesus, they will persecute you, said Jesus, further in St. John's gospel. So Jesus describes to us the cost of discipleship. If they made fun of Jesus, they will make fun of us. If the world pressured Jesus to conform to its ways, they will also do that with Jesus' disciples, namely us. So Jesus sets out the teaching that doing righteously will cost us in this life at times. But whosoever gains his life, his soul in this life, shall lose it in the next. The late Billy Graham once said that if you are not facing any sort of persecution at all or any other, no pressure at all in terms of being a Christian, then maybe you ought to examine your Christian faith and see if you really have a true Christian faith. Because all Christians living the life of Christ will face a contradiction living in the world. So Jesus also declares in today's lesson in Matthew 10, 28, Fear not them, though, who which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear God who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Jesus' words, not mine. So we are taught not to go along with the world, not to compromise our faith for the sake of fitting in with friends or family, not to live a life of worldliness and to forget about God. On the Sabbath day, for example, that is displeasing to God. Note, we're in a pandemic and many churches still are closed and certainly we have a dispensation from God in that circumstance. But I'm talking about normal times. But if we truly would be Jesus' disciples, the point is then, we need to follow him. Now, in today's first lesson from Jeremiah, we see the life of Jeremiah, and we see the life of a prophet who suffered for proclaiming God's truth. So in Jeremiah 20, after many years of preaching God's punishment on Israel for their sins, Jeremiah was finally in prison. So Jeremiah spoke the truth of God, the Bible tells us, and he didn't care if it cost him, for his faith was a faith in one who was greater than the bonds of men or the schemes of the evil false priests and false preachers of his day, like Pasher the high priest, for example. So Pasher the high priest, the Bible tells us, in the name of the king arrested Jeremiah for daring to insinuate that the nation was drifting from God and that the religion of the land was corrupt. Pasher slapped Jeremiah on the face and put him in the stocks. Yet even in the stocks, Jeremiah prophesied the word of the Lord and told of the coming destruction of a people who had departed from God's will. Even in the midst of Satan's buffeting of Jeremiah and the depression by which the devil filled Jeremiah's heart, the Bible says, Jeremiah still would not cease to praise God's name, nor would he forbear to speak out, the Bible tells us. Truly, Jeremiah then is an example of a spiritual father, as the opening hymn declares, faith of our fathers in spite of dungeon fire and sword. And Jeremiah is also an example for our times to endure in the faith, to hold fast to the truth of Christ no matter what. For no matter what we face, friends, we know that we will be on the winning team with God in the end. So today's lesson in Jeremiah, it, Jeremiah encourages us then to bolster our own faith by looking at the examples of those our spiritual fathers like Jeremiah who have gone before. The scriptures contain their testimony. 
So Hebrews 11, 39 and 40 also declares, And these all having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. So the faith talked about in today's lesson must be a living faith for us as well. For we in our faith and our surrender and commitment to Christ is the only way Christ's cause and the faith can carry on in the world. So firstly, having a firm faith in the foundation of Jesus Christ means commitment. But secondly, having a firm faith in the foundation of Jesus Christ means valuing it also. There's an old Greek fable about a rooster who once was strutting up and down the barnyard, the farmyard among the hens, when suddenly he spied something shining amid the straw. Ho, ho, he said, that's for me. And soon he rooted it out from beneath the straw. It turned out to be a pearl that by some chance had been lost in the yard. But the rooster said, you may be a treasure to men that prize you. But for me, I would rather have a single peck of barley corn than a peck of pearls. So the moral is precious things are for those that can prize them. So it is with the Christian faith in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unless the faith of Jesus of old can become something to us, we are unable to prize it. Unless we submit to Jesus Christ and be born again and allow his call to us to be heard, the things of Christ are indeed meaningless. The gospel without conversion becomes mere tradition, something our ancestors before followed and therefore we follow, but there is no real Jesus in that kind of religion. But the firm faith of the foundation of Jesus Christ, when it becomes our faith, conversely makes a difference in our lives and it brings joy furthermore, not frustration. So today, Psalm 69, verses 7 and 18 declare, Let not those who hope in you be put to shame. Let not those who seek you be disgraced. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind and your great compassions turn to me. But thirdly, having a firm faith in the right foundation of Jesus Christ means trusting in his power to save, not trusting in ourselves. So looking again in Romans 5, St. Paul writes and declares, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul goes on to describe the rules of the law of Moses in the Old Testament and the weight of sin which fell on mankind as a result of our ancestor Adam. But then almost in mid-sentence, he declares in verse 21, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. What does this mean? Well, it does not mean that the faith is do the best you can. Unless you are perfect, you cannot be in God's will. No, but the good news of the gospel, the firm foundation of the foundation of Jesus Christ is and always has been that we are in the will of God by the grace and love of God. Romans 5, 8, for God commendeth his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So it is only for us to believe this. If we're trying to follow Christ, if we're in our hearts, have turned our lives over to Jesus, I believe many of you, by the way, watching this broadcast sincerely have, well, then let's not let Satan buffet us with self-doubt. Jesus Christ loves us. He loves us even while we were and are yet sinners. If we believe in Jesus Christ and his mercy and try to be a Christian, even in our sinful nature, and that sometimes gets in the way, we're still accounted acceptable before Jesus Christ as we sincerely turn to him and repent. So two chapters over from Romans 5, Paul declares in Romans seven nineteen, The good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this sin? But I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. So what this means is while God does not exalt those who live any old way they want to, still when we accept Jesus Christ, we're still sinners, but we are pardoned and we are saved. As indeed a once popular bumper sticker on cars used to say, Christians aren't perfect, just forgiven. So we are sinners saved by grace, but despite our sin, Jesus Christ has redeemed us and he covers our sins in his blood and he accepts us as we are. To be sure, he challenges us to follow him more closely, but he also picks us up and does not count that sin to us as those who have never accepted him. This is also a part of the firm faith 
of the foundation of Jesus Christ in it. This is why we boldly take communion. We boldly worship the living Christ. We boldly confess that we're washed in the cleansing power of Christ's name. So having a firm faith in the right foundation of Jesus Christ means one, commitment, two, valuing it, and three, trusting in God's grace. Speaking of having our faith built on a firm foundation, though, I'm reminded of the story told by the author of a book that we once studied in adult Bible school in our church. The Reverend Mike Baker is author of the book, I Am Revealed, Knowing God on a First Name Basis. And he tells this story, and I quote him. A couple of months before I was scheduled to speak at a revival in a town in Texas, the guy that was organizing the weekend called me. After spending some time with the typical small talk discussing travel details and the upcoming event, he paused and he said, Mike, I need to ask a big favor of you for this weekend. When I know exactly what his request might be, I assured him that I'd do whatever he needed. But then he continued, for the time you are with us, I need you to go by another name. Okay, I replied, now what's the deal? And then he went on to explain that the former pastor of his church, the church hosting the area-wide event, had been involved in a terrible scandal and had been removed from the ministry. That former pastor, unfortunately, shared my name, Mike Baker. There was simply no way my friend could advertise the event with a name that conjured up so much emotional pain. Well, I didn't know how to respond, so I agreed. And we decided on using my middle name, Robert, for the event, for the weekend. So when I arrived in Texas, the hotel reservation was under this assumed name, my middle name, Robert Baker. The posters plastered on the walls all over the church building had my real photo, but not my first name, but my middle name and surname, Robert Baker. My friend used my middle name, to introduce me to youth groups, kids, sponsors, and church members. For three days, I preached to these people, ate with these people, chatted with them, prayed with them. But it's hard for me to really say that I got, they got to know me. In all my ministry experiences, I have never left a group of people with a more disconnected feeling because no one called me Mike all weekend. It was like it never happened. I made up my mind on the plane ride home, never again. And the Reverend Michael Robert Baker goes on, God most completely revealed himself by sending his son Jesus to walk among us. The name of Jesus is the name whereby we must be saved, Acts 4.12. So the point is, we must have the right foundation for Christian living and the firm and right faith that is found only in the name of Jesus Christ. To conclude then today then, let us ever cling to the right foundation of Jesus Christ for salvation and Christian living. And may we have a firmness and a commitment to follow Jesus in our lives and in our faithfulness to this, his church. Amen. Let us pray. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his Father, so with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, be all honor and glory, dominion and power, both now and evermore. Amen. Amen. The doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of His countenance upon you and give you His peace now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. This is Doug Puckett signing off and saying until next week, and God willing in the future, soon I'll be able to see some of you.